Bye. Hello, friends. My name is Teacher Evelyn, Evelyn Joy, and welcome back to my channel today. It has been requested of me to do some DIYs. So we have our handy dandy hot glue gun. This hot glue gun is hmm, probably from Walmart from way back when. You can get the Walmart craft section definitely has them. Hi, Teacher Kelly. So I'm wearing my crown because I'm a prop queen and it's been requested of me to do some DIYs. So I'm going to show you guys some simple DIYs. I needed to fix a few props anyway, rewards. And um, I get my refill glue sticks at Dollar Tree. It's so much cheaper to get them at Dollar Tree than at Walmart. And since I have a miniature glue gun, I can get the miniature refill glue sticks there. Um, I get my magnets at Walmart, the craft section. And these button batteries, uh, button batteries, these magnetic like buttons are about the size of a nickel. You get 52 of them for about 450. And the great thing about this is you can cut them in half. So as you can see, um, a lot of my rewards that are smaller have a half of a button battery, button battery, magnetic button. But I've had some that have been coming off, so I taped them back on. But since I have my hot glue, hot glue gun heated up, we are going to re-glue these on. So I'm gonna get a bunch of hot glue on there and then stick the bottom. So someone mentioned that I used to make a lot of DIYs and they missed my DIY videos. And I said, you know what? I've got a live coming up so we can do some DIYs. So sometimes the glue comes off. So what you can do is take it off and re-glue it. Or you can tape it if you want to. I tape it temporarily and then glue it for more permanence. So what I do is I print on cardstock and I laminate with a laminator and laminating sheets. So you're gonna wanna set that to dry. Um, this one, the magnet came off, but I kept the magnet, so I'm gonna glue it back on. These are Pokemon rewards. So I'm gonna show you some of my DIY rewards, some of my DIY props. So yeah. All right, this one, I have not yet glued the magnets onto, but I printed this and laminated it a long time ago, but I needed to buy magnets at that time. Then I bought magnets and they've been sitting there for a long time till someone requested I make a video with DIYs. So now we're gonna do this. Um, this was made by Clay Edwards on Facebook. And so, hey, Kim Turner, welcome. So this is a DIY party that we're having right now. I'm wearing my crown because I'm a prop queen. Somebody said um, on Facebook that they are obsessed or uh, addicted to props. And I said, ma'am, we call that a prop queen in VIP kid land. <laughs> so I don't say that I'm obsessed or addicted. That sounds negative. I'm a prop queen. <laughs> So, welcome to my prop queendom. Set of kingdom. Okay, so I'm putting a glob of hot glue on there. I'm going to let it dry, see? Okay. Hello, prop queen. Hello. So, now I have three friends here. If you don't mind giving me a like, that would be awesome. So, I'm making these um, superhero... Uh, Avengers or well he's not it's hard to know who all's in the Avengers because they have they add different people in different movies but um I'm pretty sure so these are just different superheroes a couple of these these are Avengers these three are Avengers a Spider-Man is definitely not an Avenger but anyway but 
I needed more rewards for boys because I have princesses and butterflies and um, those tend to be more for the girls. And the Peppa Pig ice cream I use for boys and girls, but that tends to be for younger kiddos. And <clears throat> I use my colored dinos, but that gets old quick. And um, I use my dino dollars. They used to be real popular with the boys, but now if I give them any other option, they don't choose the money anymore because they've taken so many classes with me. It used to always be their number one choice, get some money. But now they're bored of it, so got to give them some variety. They'll be excited to see that I have a new reward. Um, I also have the Pokemon reward, which boys and girls like that one. So I do Spider-Man with Manicam or Legos. Oh, Legos is a fun idea. I should look up a way to do a Lego <coughs> reward. Excuse me. So today, 1 p.m., I'm taking my kids to the zoo. You see, what I do is I have, uh, I play it by ear according to the weather, but I have certain days of the week that we do fun activities, um, kind of like field trips, outings. I have certain days that we have to run errands, certain days that we kind of have a lazy day, relax at home and certain days that we get chores done. Yesterday, I got a lot of chores done, but we also had a fun time. We sort of, my my kids and I, we call it a water park. We make a water park on our front porch. I have a closed in front porch and I made a makeshift baby gate for it to keep my kids in, keep the stray dogs out um, and just be safer. And so I'm looking at all my rewards to make sure that I don't need to, yeah, see this one has a taped on, um, magnet because the sometimes the magnets break off and you have to re-glue them but that's all right um but yeah so yesterday I filled up just a probably three inches of water in our kitty pool and we have a little slide that we a kitty slide that we put in the kitty pool so there's that um, and we have a bunch of like plastic toys, you know, like Barbies and like tea, teapots and teacups and, um, just for practicing pouring and just kind of have fun with water. And so, but my three-year-old, she's real sensory sensitive about getting water on her clothes and I thought that she was fine with it if it's a swimming suit but I'm realizing now that okay she might be getting more sensitive to, to this now but um if she's not in the water she wants to take her clothes off if it's even got a drop of water on it if it's wet at all so we have to be careful so I'm like no 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 I'm trying to teach her she's three trying to teach her like you can't be naked in public you can't just strip your clothes because you don't like the feel of water on your clothes so I'm trying to teach her you know about privacy and stuff and um also I have to be prepared for situations like that we were at the petting zoo and she splashed in a puddle and then she wanted to strip off her clothes and it's not just a regular toddler thing it's 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 a sensory thing because for her it caused a reaction in her that was very, 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 like, she was super distressed and upset that I wanted her to wear clothes that had a drop of water on it. Um, and that was very upsetting for her. So some friends of mine helped calm her down and convince her to put her clothes back on at the petting zoo. So that was a whole other thing. So now I need to remember, if we're going anywhere, that there's potentially water. Got to bring change clothes with us so that she can feel okay in her dry clothes but it's definitely like a sensory thing for her it's not you know I can't punish her or get mad at her but I am trying to teach her about you know privacy and how we can't just strip off our clothes in public because something doesn't feel right to us you know what I mean but anyway so I'll show you guys some of my rewards um another thing that I do that I like is um 
So I have my cookie sheet there, but I put my reward on the whiteboard and the whiteboard from Walmart, this is like $2.50 at Walmart, it's less than $3. And, um, or maybe $2.80, I don't know, but it's less than $3. It comes already with these strong magnets on the back. So keep, keep it like that. And that way you can put your reward on there. And then what I do is I'll, as they get their reward, I put it on like this, you know, so they can see it. But then every so often I count it with them. We say one, two, three, four. And I also, we, every single reward that I give, that is, a, I try to have rewards that are different colors so that I can teach them colors and numbers along with the reward. Because some people, they think, what's the point of rewards? Why do you give a secondary reward? And, um... The secondary reward is an opportunity for extension. So for me, it's not just a motivator, it's also an extension. So not only are they um, getting an, a little encouragement, like, hey, you're doing a good job. So by the end of class, it's gonna look like this. They're gonna have eight princesses, a gold trophy, and five stars. They'll be like, Wow, good job. So almost every class I've recently decided to give at least one gold trophy per class. Um, I only have three gold trophies out right here in my pocket. Oh, here, I'll show you guys behind the scenes. This is where I keep my rewards um, in these pockets because it's just easy to grab, grab and go. But it's just out of the sight of the kids but it's close enough that I'm not like moving off camera or anything to go get them, you know what I mean? So that's fun and exciting. I also have, you know, lots of props and puppets and good times right there. Okay. <clears throat> Next, I made these <clears throat> I made these dino butterflies. I teach them, you know, green, orange, blue, yellow, pink purple. So, um, yeah. And it'll have the stars at the bottom and they'll probably get a gold trophy too. Um, I also have this dino dollar reward and I say, sorry, when you do a good job, you get money. Let me make sure all of my money is are good yeah they're good okay so these are 100 dino dollars each I got them from the group props and rewards from Facebook and I will read what you guys are talking about in a minute um also friends <clears throat> do not be discouraged or worried if your bookings are down this week and next they will be back up again but um, my bookings, I mean, are just just missing a few spots, which I'm fine with. Um, but definitely the last week in June, they're going to be back up higher. Okay, here's one that I need to glue on. So I don't know the names of all of the Pokemon, but the ones that I know, I tell them the names. So we don't do colors with the Pokemon. We do the Pokemon names, but that tends to be older kids. Um, but they don't tend to repeat me. They just hear me say it. So, yeah. So, this is my Pokemon reward. <clears throat> so, we count them. I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <gasps> ten Pokemon. Good job. So, what I do personally is every time I give them a star, I do one of these. Yay! Good job. I've been doing that since pretty much day one, my first class. Um, but that's just for the stars. I don't do that for the reward. For the reward, what I do, I don't like doing high fives all the time. I only do one high five per class. And that's when they get to one, two, three, four, five. When they get to their fifth reward, I'm like... Five Pokemon, high five! Pew. Boom! So, um, basically, I do that. I say five Pokemon, good job, high five. Pew. 
So I hit my hand so it makes the sound. This isn't a satisfying sound when you high five to do that. But I go pew. And I hold my hand up until they put their hand up to the screen. And when they put their hand up to the screen, my screen, I say boom. But we only do one high five per class because that can be time consuming. So now we're going to look at, it's mostly dry. This is my new reward. You get four. Well, first I stack it up like this. Four. Oh, what's the green guy's name? Um, the Hulk. You get the Hulk. Maybe I should write the name on the back. You get Iron Man. One, two, three. Good job. So then after three, I move it over. Spider-Man! Ah, ah, what's his name? Captain America! Five, Superman, Superman, five superhero ice creams! Good job! High five! All right, great job. Okay, so that's one. Um, this is the Peppa Pig ice cream one. So it was made by Clay Edwards as well. So Peppa Pig, I say Peppa Pig. And I say Susie Sheep, meh. Uh, Pedro Pony, nay. Rebecca Rabbit, squeak, squeak. And Danny Dog, woof, woof. So those are the names. And those are the sounds they make on the show. So the kids think that's funny. I had a kid today. He's one of my regulars, and he does not like to talk. He likes doing the clicking on the screen and the drag and drop and the circling and stuff, but he doesn't like to talk. He's shy. So, or timid, whatever you want to say. Um, so... And today he was having coughing fits. He was so sick. So he just kept coughing and coughing. I was like, drink some water. I said, it's okay to drink water in, in English class. It's okay. So he drank some water and he had his grandma and his mom patting him on the back. But he hardly talked today. But I noticed on his shirt he had Peppa Pig. So I gave him the Peppa Pig reward. So you got to pick up on those cues on your, with your kids that don't talk. Pick up on cues like their shirt or if they show you a stuffed animal or something so you know what they're into, what they like, even if they don't talk that much. So, yeah, these are the button batteries. Button batteries. Button magnets that I use. So, yeah. Let me see what y'all are talking about. Oh, there's a new feature I'm going to make a video about. Whoop. Right uh, after this video, there's a new feature that you can... Add a nickname for your student. This is different than just writing a note. Um, Marcy Norton, it's my first time seeing you in the chat box. Hello and welcome. Great. Okay, Kim Turner said, do you have any kids you don't use rewards with? Um, I have never not used a secondary reward, um, but I have had students misbehaving and not participating, so they only got two or three rewards the whole class. They still got five stars, um, but that's what I did in that situation. Um, I have had students who have told me, I have a little boy who's a regular, he's a rascal. Um, but he had lost a tooth and I saw that he had lost a tooth and he said, no, he didn't want this. No, 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 no. He said no to all of my rewards. So I said, okay, no reward. I was going to do no reward. Then I saw he lost a tooth and I was like, okay, today, oh, this is a bad marker. I'm sure you guys have seen this reward before. And we were laughing about this, too, because, you know, he lost it, too. So today, when you do a good job, you get a tooth. <laughs> so they get teeth as they go along. 
They end up with some teeth at the end. <laughs> you end up laughing about it because it looks so silly. So that's a reward idea. Um, I actually don't do my drawing reward anymore because my markers are kind of like dying. But I used to do roll of face reward. I did it so much. I think it got old for me. Okay. So talking about DIYs, this is a DIY I want to show you guys. Um, this is, is a grease scraper from Dollar Tree. It's from the, it looks like this. It's from the cooking section, cooking wear, and it's magnetic. And it's great for CVC words. <clears throat> so what I did was I took Sharpie marker, and this is foam that I cut into little squares from Walmart. You can make it any color you want. I chose yellow and orange so you can really the the black letters stand out. Other people have done other colors, but I chose yellow and orange. You don't have to make the vowels a different color, but um, that's the example that I saw. So I use this in class when we're doing a bunch of CVC words where these two letters tend to stay the same. So it'll be like k at cat, b at bat, m at mat, r at rat. One problem I've come across, and I'll tell you the solution for it. Is um, I've come across, sometimes they'll do like double letters that I don't have doubles of. Like all. And they'll have you do. So what I do is I just use my whiteboard. Because it's magnetic as well. Call. Ball. Fall. Mall. So that's just an idea for you for extending. It's also a way of making those slides a little bit more fun. Oops, sorry. A little bit more interesting. And um, I also use this when talking about vowels, but I usually take the Y off because <laughs> I have an orange Y and a yellow Y. I say the vowels are A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. I've only done that once or twice, but it's a visual aid to show older students what the vowels are. Yeah, I'm reading what you guys are talking about. Yeah, thank you. Um, you okay, so Heather doesn't use secondary rewards with assessments. Um, the reason I always use secondary rewards is because I've heard of people who say you get a two apple review. You get a two apple review, and I'm going to be working on this. Uh, this is a foam um, surfboard. I'm going to be working on it as we're talking. Um, I've seen people on Facebook get a two apple review, and maybe they're accused of not being patient, right? Well, they review the tape, and the teacher was patient. But it's not invalidated because the teacher did not use the secondary reward system. But then recently, I'm going over it with marker. Recently, they came over, or they came out with a new policy that you don't have to use a secondary reward system. Well, my question is this. Um, are they still going to say that if you get a two apple and you're accused of, you know, not being patient enough, are they still going to say, well, 
it still stands because you didn't give a secondary reward. Even though they told us we don't have to give a secondary reward, I don't really trust that being communicated to the right departments to cover my rear. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I just give a secondary reward. I do it briefly. I do it briefly if there's not much time. I'm just like, okay, good job. You get a princess. It's pink. Pink. There you go. Three princesses. You know, um, it doesn't have to take up a lot of time or it can take time. You can use it for extending and you can say, what color is this? You know, count, count with me, you know. Um, <clears throat> so that's an idea. But um, Teacher Kelly yesterday was talking about creative ways to write feedback. And I suggest you go hang out, go check out that video. Um, I, I was going to say, okay, every teacher is different. Their style is different. And, you know, different people hire us, you know, because they're looking for different things. And I have a video about all the different kinds of teachers we have. <sighs> now, what I'm about to say is controversial. I don't want it to offend anyone. It's just my perspective, but I'm just going to say it. Um, <sighs> I don't want to offend anyone. Our feedbacks are translated not by a person, but by a machine. So things can get translated really weird. So what I've always done, um, take it or leave it, is I've always used very simple grammar, very simple sentences. I don't get too complex with my descriptions. And, you know, take it or leave it. Um, I, I don't... I don't go too far as just describing things real in depth because I know how translation um, services work. I have worked as, okay, translator is written and interpreter is spoken. So I worked as a translator and interpreter in an elementary school where half of our parents only spoke Spanish and at for a while at our school, I was the only bilingual person. So even though it wasn't my job to translate and interpret, I translated a lot of papers that they took home to their parents, and I interpreted at a lot of IEP meetings and parent-teacher conferences, and they paid me extra, right, for any extra time that I worked. If it was during the school day, they didn't pay me extra. Um, that said... I am familiar with things like Google Translate, and <laughs> it's it's comical. Okay, if if you're bilingual, it's comical when you look at things um, that have been translated by Google Translate. It's literally hilarious um, because it doesn't make a lick of sense uh, when it translates. Uh, it doesn't translate accurately or correctly. And for that reason, instead of going in depth and and sounding real professional and sounding real smart, I've kept it real simple um, on my feedback. And over time, I have started using bigger and bigger vocabulary words. At the very beginning, I was very afraid to do that. Um. Ed Nance wrote the book um, about writing feedback, and he is fluent in Chinese. Well, he speaks English and Chinese. So definitely read his book. Take his advice over mine. Anything he says to do, do it. Me personally, I bought the book. I read a little bit of it. And I currently have a different computer, so I bought a downloadable version, and I don't know if I can read it now. So it was sort of one of those things I procrastinated on reading, and now I lost my chance, kind of. But 
um, definitely check out Ed Nance's book. I hope, hope, hope that I haven't offended anyone by saying, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, most of them understand we are not Chinese, but still, um, I, I would like what I write to be translated accurately, so I try to keep my sentences simple. But I don't want to discourage anyone who has a different style than me. I don't want um, anyone to change what they're doing to try to be like me. Like, do your own thing. Do what you want to do, you know? Um, so the reason I'm making this surfboard, um, is because Dino surfs the waves in VIP Kid for level one, the Jamaica unit, where we say, surf the waves, surf the waves, surf the waves until you fall. So I've been meaning to design a surfboard for a while, but um, yeah, let's see. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna put some purple. Um. There was something else I was going to talk about today. Oh, yeah. I was going to show you guys a lot of my props that I have or have made. Um, just one moment. I'm finishing my surfboard. It's almost all done. So I colored it. I colored it with Expo markers. But it turned out cute. It looks like a surfboard. There we go. All right. Surfboard. So Dino will surf for, this is my bongo drum. It's also a, yeah. Wait, 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 what did teacher Kelly say? Oh, Evelyn, message him and let him know. He will help you get it on your computer. Okay. I hope so, Heather. We do the same with them. I've gotten some weird feedback. I had one person say I need to I needed to be fixed. LOL. It was a five apple, and the rest of what they said was nice. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like they only write a couple sentences to us. And it, it comes out all weird. We're writing like a whole long paragraph. So I try to use like simple sentences and simple vocabulary so that it's not way weird. I looked better with the crown, guys. So, okay, I'm going to show you some of my stuff. Um, not all of this I made, but these are some of my favorite props. I use this one a lot for talking about riding bikes. I say, do you like to ride your bike? Riding bikes is a, a conversation topic um, that I choose a lot of the times because most kids in in uh, China have a bike and enjoy riding bikes. I've only had one kid who said that her bike has had flat tires for a couple of years and her parents still haven't fixed it. I was like, what? You live in China. Yeah. So I have um, all the good animals. I got a lot of these from Facebook Marketplace, um, but I got a couple of these from Dollar Tree. So, yeah. So those are my zoo animals. These are my pets. I've got dog and rabbit and cat. And you know how we also have like small dog, like puppy and kitten vocabulary. And I have a rat. Isn't he lovely? And another dog. Because sometimes it'll be like dogs, like plural or cats. So I have a couple of them. Um, I have farm animals. So, bark, 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 bark. Ooh. I have a horse. Nay. This is a picture of my husband and I in a carriage. Oh. 
My kids are being weird. So when they say um, ride a carriage in the Italy unit, I also have little ones, like a little cow and a little horse and a little pig. And this tractor, I don't really use that much. It used to be my carriage, and now it's not. I have under the sea animals. I used octopus and fish today. Both of these I used today. Uh, uh, octopus, fish, uh, shark, you know, whale, dolphin. I have a lot of birds. I use eagle, um, ostrich. I use this one just for a bird. Penguin I don't use very often. As you guys know, this is uh, the uh, kiwi bird. I got this from Amazon. This is a uh, um, flamingo <laughs> and a parrot and a duck. Quack, quack. So, yep. Here are some of, my, some of my bigger animals. You know, camel comes up a lot. This turtle comes up a lot. And occasionally there's a bear. So they're in that one because they're my bigger animals. Um, snake. Ah, it's a snake! A snake! Ah. Or lizards, you know. Talking about cold-blooded animals. People say they hate the snakes and reptiles. You know, I'm like, you just don't have the right props, you know? Um, I also have a deer, which I use. And these other ones I don't use. That's why they're way down at the bottom. I don't really use those ones. Don't really use this one. But I use the deer. I don't really use this turtle because I have the other turtle. Today we were talking about bugs. And my student was like, is that real or fake? And I said, it's fake. But I did scare myself before. B is probably the one that I use the most. Bzzz. B -b 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 B. These are some extra props that I pretty much don't use. <clears throat> I use I use this today. Ride a horse, ride a <laughs> how'd it go? Um, it goes um Mongolia, here we come. Let's ride a horse, ride, ride, ride. So I also use this for gallop. So what I do is I, I grab the legs and move it like this so it looks like gallop. I use the monkey sometimes. I use this for jaguar. Is it jaguar? Probably not. It's probably a cheetah, but I use it for jaguar. I don't really use the zebra anymore because I got the little zebra. I use this one for the British unit um, because he has a British flag on him. He, he's a guard. When talking about the guard, I use this crown and I use this when talking about British. I might use this for presents. I've been looking around for this. I didn't know where it was. Apparently that's where it is. Um, I could use this one for parts of the body or clothes. I haven't really used him yet, but I thought he looks useful, right? So, um, in this drawer here, I have a kangaroo. I have a snowman. I, they used to have Baba Black Sheep as a song that they would sing, so I colored a regular sheep black. I mean, I colored a white sheep black. Got a polar bear. I made a bat. This is made out of felt, and I used hot glue. I put an extra circle for the face and glued on some googly eyes. Mm -hmm. I have another sheep, another duck, another pig, you know, all that good stuff. And I've shown you guys before the furniture. I love showing this table um, because it does special tricks. And uh, so I surprise my student. I can talk about decorations for a birthday party. So, but, um, so I can use that for a birthday party unit 
or I mostly use it for talking about table. So that's good for extension when you're teaching the word table. I made a video about how I made this wardrobe because like, where do you find a wardrobe, right? So um, I put, you know, a magazine picture of clothes. This is actually from American Girl Doll Catalog. So I have a wardrobe prop. I have dollhouse furniture. Um, some of this is from Dollar Tree. Some of this is from the thrift store. Some of this is from my kid's Peppa Pig dollhouse. My kids just lose the furniture anyway, so I let them have the dollhouse and the dolls, and I get the furniture. <laughs> I let them keep like one or two pieces of furniture, and they already lost it anyway, so I need it more. My kids are so funny because my daughter, Deborah, she's three, and she'll give me like a random little piece of paper, and she'll be like, here go, mama, just, just for your class. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. You're sharing with me for my class. So the lower down the drawers, the less I need those things, right? So over here, I have an airplane. I have a car. I have a baseball and bat. Look. VIP Kid Teacher Evelyn. I ordered it for like a few bucks on Amazon. So talking about sports, I've got some balls from from uh, Dollar Tree. These are actually <laughs> dog toys. <laughs> but hey, my kids don't know that. This is also a dog toy from Dollar Tree. It's a hot dog. Um, this is a mouse that's actually broken, but it still works for a prop. So yeah. Uh, the reason these are together in a drawer is because this is for let's fly to the USA. Let's drive cars in the USA. Play t-ball in the USA. Eat hot dogs in the USA. Let's fly to the USA. Let's drive cars in the USA. Play t-ball in the USA. Eat hot dogs in the USA. So what I do for the USA unit is we do actions one time and we do props another time and then we stand up and do the actions another time. So I have this for both taxi and cab and for taxi cab and for cab driver and taxi driver. What it is, it's, it's just a yellow car from the thrift store and I added on the words. I got this from Amazon. Um, it was a dog birthday hat, but I put stuffing in it and glued right here and made a prop for happy birthday, blow out the candles. I use this <laughs> for pinata for the Mexico unit. It's actually a doll, but it looks like a pinata, close enough to a pinata when I flip it upside down. Um, I have shoes and socks. This is both for talking about clothes. These are babies, stuff that my kids grew out of. <coughs> talking about smells. That smells bad. I also have this that I don't hardly use. But yeah, it's a little piece of cake with a candle. And I used to use this, but I don't anymore. So yeah, that's another drawer of good times. The reason I have so much stuff <laughs> is because I'm a hoarder. No, just kidding. <laughs> because I am, I have been with VIP Kid for 18 months, 19 months, million years. I don't know, 18 months, I think. I just signed my fourth contract today. I used my hats <laughs> and stacked them up. For the France unit. And um, that can be funny. Hats! <laughs> I did that today in class. 
and anything to make the kids laugh. The reason I have a red hat and a blue hat, they are from Dollar Tree. They are for Go Go Kid. They have a red hat, blue hat, teaching red and blue. Um, so basically, I bought the hats for my kids not to get sunburned at the zoo. Then they didn't wear them, and then I had to teach Go Go Kid, and then they became props. So that's how that happened. Um, some of the best food props are actually like dog squeaky toys from Dollar Tree that I took the squeaker out of. Uh, I don't know about your students, but my students don't know what the heck a taco is, so I don't really use that. Bread comes up a lot. I got this from a thrift store. I cut this out of a carton of milk. Um, I cut these out of, you know, um, cardboard boxes of frozen foods. Um, cheese. Cheese comes up surprisingly a lot, and I can never find that little thing in my drawer. I have this for noodles. It's uh, ramen noodles in a bag that I may or may not have nibbled on. Okay. Yeah, ice cream. This is also a uh, squeaky toy from Dollar Tree. This is from Ally Express. This is a mango. This is from Amazon. It is a squishy toy, but it is rice. Um... This was a squeaky toy from the dog section. I never use that. This is from, okay, I don't use that unless I'm talking about like nose. Yeah, I almost never use that, just saying. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've got a lot of like toy foods. Some of them is a reward because I put glue on and a magnet on them so bunch of food for extending about food beans in a bag for talking about beans I'm just showing you all my behind the scenes goods I obviously don't use all these props in one class but if I see a class is going to be about something I grab those things right before class and then I'm ready for them. Um, sorry, my face is itchy. And the further down, the less I use it. Okay. I also have on my desk, let me come back over here. Mm, sorry, my face just itches. <laughs> okay. So I have these good old treats on my desk. Um, so what it is, is I've got like cans in here. It's basically an extra large can and I use hot glue and fabric and turn it into a can for putting props in. So reduce, reuse, that's an example of reuse. So I can put pens in there or other props. Let me show you my props from there. One second. So I got this uh, for talking about, I use this a lot for, where are you from? I'm from China. Oh, I'm from America. Good job. I have a flower here for talking about smell or talking about spring or talking about flowers. Um, uh, I have Meg and Mike finger puppets that I don't really use that much anymore. I have a, I'll show you back. This is a kite on a stick, it's taped to a stick. I say, fly a kite. Um, today I used these props and I actually also have, um, this is hot glue, um, a strawberry on a stick. I made pancakes out of paper. I made these out of foam. This is for, if you've ever taught the France unit for, um, for VIP kid. I have a short purple hat. You have a tall yellow hat. We eat pancakes, one, two, three. Pancakes and strawberries. So my, um, my dino puppet helps me with that. I made this for I like and I don't like. Um, I have this for talking about I like to play table tennis or I like to play ping pong. This is me. I drew some sleeves on myself. 
This is my cat. I have a picture of my kids riding bikes, but we don't really use that that much. I have this picture. This is my family. Can I show my family? When talking about friends, I say, this is me. These are my two best friends, Julie and Emily. So yeah, those are some of my props. I also have these for singing the alphabet and for this upside down, sorry, for counting and I have a calendar of my city to show a picture of the city I live in. That's my prop collection, y'all. Oh, talking about movement today. This is an amusement park. This is a Ferris wheel. So I use that. Mm. I use this for Egypt. Bat fertilizer. My poop emoji would be good for that. Bat fertilizer unit. I hate making kids repeat droppings twice. I've never taught that unit. What level is that? Is that like level four? I don't teach like level four that often. Um... That's so funny. I have a beehive, bees, and a honey pot as a reward I use for the flower. Oh, very good. I live in India. I live in America. I said a full sentence. Do I get a star? <laughs> very good. I have a, a poop emoji on man and cam. Very good. The kids are laughing. Heather, I probably, let's see. I have a slide when it's talking about stinky. It looked like something from a toilet on the screen. I almost pulled out my daughter's poop emoji pillow. LOL. <laughs> Very cute. There you go. <laughs> yes. All right. So, yeah. We've been going for 50 minutes. Now. <gasps> Whoops. <laughs> this fell down. So do be careful, though, if you have an extra cookie sheet and you have things with magnets and you set it down, you can pick them up. I pranked myself one time doing that. All right, guys. My face is, like, itchy because of there's a lot of pollen in the air. Um, I'm allergic to grass and flower pollen, but especially, especially grass pollen, ragweed, stuff like that. So tis the season. Um, so my nose was bothering me during class, but, oh, well, I recently had a, another parent bless me with five reviews. One of them was a five apple and four of them were four apples. And the only written comment they said was satisfied. So I'm assuming that parent thought they were just satisfied and that would be four apples for four classes I'm like thanks I was <laughs> I had 50 classes in a row where I had five apples and I was trying to get my 4.91 up but surprisingly after she left those four apples my 4.91 stayed at 4.91 but I think it's kind of solidified there and so anyway I was trying to get my average up but it is what it is anyway yeah so <laughs> in over 2,000 classes, I've now gotten 24 apples, 20, two, zero, four apples. And so, you know what? That's 1% um, of the classes, right? 2,000 divided by 20 is 1%. Um, so 1% of the classes I've taught thought it was a four apple. So that's not that bad. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll appreciate, I'll take it. Um, but so most of my four apples are from two different parents. Anyway, um, I just feel slightly jealous when I see people post on Facebook and they have like a thousand five apples and like one or zero four apples or less. I'm like, 
that's not me. <laughs> Let me show you mine. Um, so, but that's okay. It is, it is what it is. So I've taught 2,233 classes. Um, I've taught 745 students. I've taught for 552 days. So I'll take it. Um, and I have 605 five apples, 24 apples, and seven three and below, which a lot of those were invalidated, but even if they're invalidated, they still show up, so I don't get it, but oh well. Anyway, uh, I had one parent a while back comment, I thought from looking at your profile and all your, all your feedbacks, I thought you were going to be a bad teacher, but surprisingly, she was a really good teacher, and she used props, and she engaged the student and all this stuff. I'm like, wow. <laughs> People look at my feedbacks and think I'm a bad teacher. That's great. But, you know, I'm not complaining because this week – a lot of people's bookings are way, way, way down, and my bookings are only slightly down. Like, for the most part, all the bookings that I want, for the most part, are, are almost all the way filled. So, um, I know a lot of teachers who have taught over 2,000 classes have, like, no bookings almost, and I'm, I'm just very thankful that that's not me right now. I'm not bragging. I'm just thankful. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not bragging, not complaining. Let me log in right here quick. So, but how are you all doing with bookings? I know we talked about it a little bit at Kelly's Live yesterday, and a lot of you are doing fine because y'all are high-quality teachers is what it is. Okay. Um, so, and a lot of newbies aren't getting any bookings at all. Anyway, so it's slightly patchy, but for the most part, it's pretty good. Yesterday I slept in because my top first two bookings didn't book. So I closed the bookings and I slept in, which was nice. Um, so yeah, for the most part, my bookings are slightly patchy, but for the most part, they're full. Let's look at next week. And, and the funny thing is, too, I have a lot, a lot of regulars. This is next week, but I've still got time to fill it up. Still looking pretty good. Um, sorry, my nose. Ugh. Sorry, guys. Ugh. My allergies. Oof. Okay. So I forgot what I was going to say, but yeah. Fully booked for me isn't nearly as full as y'all, though. Yeah. Slept in two hours today. It was nice. Nice. Um, yeah, Marianne is fully booked 10 to 12 a day and 16 on Friday. I feel like I might do that when my kids are older, maybe. Um, if I ever get like, if we're ever in a situation where, um, my husband's without a job or, heaven forbid something happened to our marriage or to my husband. I love that I work for a VIP kid and go, go kid. And that I can just open more slots and work more and make more money. I love, love, love that. So that's awesome. Um, so that if I needed to work 10 or 12 a day, I could do that. I'm also thankful that right now, you know, my husband's working and, uh, everything is all good, but it, it's all, it's always good to have a plan, sorry, my nose, it's always good to have a plan in mind of what would you do if something happened to your husband's job, right? What would, what would you do if, if heaven forbid something happened to, to your husband or to your marriage? Like have a plan for if you are the sole income of the family, what would you do? You know? Um, yeah. It's harder to work more when they're little. Yeah. A good example. Sorry, my nose is bothering me. A good example of that is, um, a year ago, I was just teaching two or three classes per morning with spaces in between because I was breastfeeding a small baby and I was new and getting used to the curriculum and everything. So I've built up props over time as I've gotten experience. Um, 
also teacher Kelly had asked in a former video, like, do we just fly by the seat of our pants or do we plan and how do we time manage and everything like that? I have taught over 2000 classes. So I I'm very familiar with the different curriculums. Um, and so I agree with teacher Kelly with how she does it as far as um, not really keeping track of slide numbers for the most part, but checking it about halfway through um, and pacing yourself. You'll notice if your student is just flying through the material and you can extend on each slide or you can extend towards the end as you realize you're running out of slides. Um, if you notice that your students taking a real long time you can um, try to speed things up a little bit and not spend as much time on each slide. A lot of times I teach younger classes, so a lot of level ones, a lot of level twos, and those involve songs and singing. So if I'm noticing that we're going through the slides too quickly, uh, we'll sing the songs more than once. A lot of times the unit song will sing three times through. Um, and I'll also, when we're not singing it, have them repeat the phrases and words that are in the song. So, but the hello song, usually just one or two times. And the goodbye song, usually just one time, sometimes two. Um, and I throw in the alphabet song for extra extension. You know, I throw in counting and colors and shapes for extra extension with younger kids. With older kids, I throw in conversation. You know, what do you see on the screen? There's people that are riding bikes. Do you like to ride your bike? What color is your bike? Do you do you ride with your family or your friends? Um, what activities do you like to do? Do you like to play basketball or soccer? What do you like? You know, what sports do you like? What instruments do you play? What music do you like? Um, so like older students extending with conversation, younger students extending with more simple vocabulary. Um, and I sometimes finish a little bit past 25 minutes, but I never finish past 28 minutes. Um, for the most part, I finish at like 25, 26 minutes. But yeah, yeah. Um, as far as planning ahead of time, uh, for GoGo -Go Kid, I go through all the slides and I, I make sure I'm ready for pacing and everything because it's brand new for me. And that's what I used to do with VIP Kid, but now it's second nature. But for example, when I see like, okay, I have four minutes till my next class. What's my next class about? My next class is about France. I'm going to need these props right here. I'm going to need my dino puppet. I got him a hat at Walmart. It, it has a rubber band on it. Pretty cool, huh? Hello. So, um, or if I'm like, oh, it's about Jamaica. I need my drum. I need my surfboard. Or if it's like, oh, I need my mango and apple and banana for a, a trial. Or I'm going to need my, oh, I didn't even show you guys these props. It's about family. So I'm going to need mom, dad, a little girl, and sister and brother. So family, maybe extend with grandma and grandpa, you know. Um, so I just like see what's the lesson about and they'll tell you an overview of vocabulary words and stuff. So I'll just like grab those things. And if during class, you know, if, if I see the class is going to be about Kenya, I've got this little Kenya guy, Kenya. I'll get out my ostrich, my elephant, and my lion, and I'm ready to go. So it only takes me a few seconds because I already know what the vocabulary is about. So it's like elephants and ostriches and lions live in Kenya. How high can you jump? How high can you jump? How high can you jump to touch the stars of Kenya? Or if the lesson is going to be about Egypt, huh? I'm ready to go. So it only takes me a few seconds to grab my props because I have my props always, always, always in the specific location. Um, I always know exactly where they are and I know what vocabulary is in what kind of lessons and so I can grab it right before class or I can grab it as I'm teaching. But I have it in places so that I don't have to go off screen in order to grab it, right? And the rewards are right here. So I can grab them. All right. My family needs me. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later.